Yo, so this is a normal Lego minifig, and this is a slightly bigger version of that. I mean, this thing is huge. But yeah, in this video, I'm going to take you on a wild journey and show you exactly how I made this giant minifig. And then at the end of the video, we're actually going to take him outside into the real world to see if bro is actually built for it. Let's do this. Alright, so since we're going to be doing a fair bit of measuring in this video, I decided to order a perfect tool for the job. Yeah, it's an official LEGO ruler. And using it, we can see that a standard minifig is 4cm tall. And I'm 180cm, which is 5 foot 11 so basically 6 foot. But I'd want the big minifigure to be exactly the same height as me. That's a tall boy. Alright, so now that we know the height, we need to think about what materials we can use. So LEGO makes their pieces by basically melting together a bunch of tiny plastic granules. But this requires really expensive machines and a lot of free space. And I don't have either of those. So I took out a notepad and started thinking of different ways. Maybe you could use coloured cardboard pieces and glue them together. But then that wouldn't be very strong and it would be hard to keep together at such a big scale. Alright, so what about just using wood? I mean, that could work, but the whole thing would end up being really heavy. And our minifig needs to be lighter so he's more agile and easier to move if we want to actually take him outside. So after a lot of headache and different ideas, I had a eureka moment. So I jumped on my laptop and spent $500 on the biggest 3D printer I could find. And after about a week of waiting, I finally received a big box. So then I tried carrying it upstairs with one hand, which was quite hard. Alright, so that was a struggle, but we got it. Let's open this bad boy up. Damn, this print head looks like a Transformers piece. But anyway, let's take it out of the box. And then I started assembling it, and it honestly just kind of felt like building an oversized Lego set. Until I got to the wiring part. And it kind of feels like I'm defusing a bomb, and if I make one wrong move, this whole thing could just blow up. Alright, it's time for the peel. Damn, now we have a fully functioning printer, and we can basically make anything with it. Bruh. So I went ahead and spent a few hours designing the minifig torso, which took so long because it essentially has to be printed in four separate parts, or otherwise it will be way too big to fit onto the print area. And I also have to figure out a way of connecting the arms later on, as I do want them to be fully movable. Alright, with the design ready, I went ahead and unboxed some plastic filament that we're going to use as the material for this thing. Nice, let's start printing. Damn, this thing is pretty satisfying. A few moments later. But that print failed, so I had to bin it. And after a lot of headache, I eventually figured out that I was basically trying to print too fast. So I had to slow the printer down, which meant that now this one torso piece would take nearly 17 hours to print. And I am too impatient to just wait that long. I would easily go insane, so I had to find a way to distract myself. So I decided to cop an actual Lego scaled up minifig from my local Lego store. And after quickly putting it together, we can assemble everything just like a normal minifig. And it measures at around 27 centimeters tall. It's basically the biggest minifig you can officially buy directly from Lego. Oh yeah, I also own this torch minifig that we can put in between these two for the height lineup it's around 19 centimeters tall but it doesn't stop there because lego actually also sells a fully wooden minifig the hands are made out of plastic though and it's basically the same size as the torch one but it does come with some lego bricks that you can build into various things like a pencil it doesn't actually work though or you can make a little camera which is kind of cool there's also a guitar which you can break over another minifig like a real rock star or you can just build an ice lolly and pretend it actually tastes like something so the fact that you can build stuff that you can hold is pretty good but you can't actually move the arms or the legs or even turn the head which is very disappointing considering this thing costs like $130. But this is our minifig lineup so far. And I am going to be adding a few more unexpected and surprising minifigs to it later. So make sure you stick around. Okay, so it looks like our torso piece has finished printing. So I went ahead and spent the next few days printing more of these pieces. It wasn't all smooth sailing though, because I did run into a couple more issues. Like one time the plastic filament got caught on the arm holding it, meaning the printer couldn't melt and extrude the plastic. So it was basically printing nothing for like eight hours straight. So that was fun. And then we actually started moving into a new house. So I had to stop production for a bit and focus on that first. And eventually, after after some time, all four of the pieces were finished. Now I just had to use some sandpaper to sand all of the edges. Yeah, this bit was really boring to do. Once they were nice and smooth, we can use some Fortnite juice to properly clean them. Then I ordered some strong super glue and put some gloves on so that my skin doesn't get fused to the minifig. Like imagine going to the emergency room with a big Lego torso stuck to your hand. But then after applying some of the glue around the edge, we can align the pieces together and hope that the glue holds. And after testing the strength of it, I'd say that was successful. And after more sanding, cleaning and gluing, we now have two torso pieces. So now we need to mark out some PVC pipe quickly cut it and glue it in place inside of the torso and you guessed it sand clean and glue and just like that we have a giant lego minifig torso like this thing is huge already and the pipes inside of it will actually let us attach some arms to it speaking of i made sure to print them just in time then we can remove the supporting plastic which actually is a really satisfying part of the build and then we're actually going to use some pvc pipe to attach the hands later on lovely with all that in place we need to glue the whole arm together guys i think the arm got stuck to me <laughs>
Get out. Then bring the torso back in and simply slot the arm inside of it. But it is a bit too loose. So I decided to use some of this white duct tape to try and thicken the pipe a little bit. Which means that now the arms actually stay in place if they are moved. This is honestly starting to look so cool. But we do need to make a neck so that we can actually attach the head later on. And once we glue it on, that's more like it. But we are missing the hands. So I'm going to pull a complete speed run and quickly print them. Remove the supporting plastic. Glue the wrist on. Measure some more of the minifig's bone. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Then more glue. And clean up some of the mess we made. And bosh, we have a hand. So now I just have to do the same thing for the other side. Side. Damn, and now we have a full huge Lego torso. And next we have to give him some legs. But then something else unexpectedly started happening. Guys, I'm actually so ill right now. I think I got COVID again. Yep, I did. But we gotta stay strong and I'm still designing the legs for the minifig right now. So after a few designs, I started printing the bottom of the legs. But I felt really tired at this point, so I decided to take a short nap. And yes, if you're wondering, I sleep with my mask on. And while falling asleep, I was actually trying to figure out the best way of attaching the legs to the rest of the body. Because I want the minifig to be able to sit down and stand up. Which means that his legs have to move on some sort of joint. But if we just use the same round pipes as for the arms, the minifig would most likely wobble and just fall over. So the only other option was to permanently glue the legs to the body. Unless... I just went full up Minecraft mode and decided to use square pipes instead of round pipes. So after finishing the design, I blessed the printer with more work. Alright, time to glue everything. And after cutting more minifig bones, I also cooked up some waste pieces that we can slide onto the square pipe together with the legs. And we end up with a giant pair of minifig legs that stand fully straight. Or we can simply slide the legs off and put them back on at a different angle to make them sit down. Mission complete. So now we can drop the torso on top, but it isn't really secured in any way, so it kind of just slides around. So we do need to fix that. I decided to quickly print a couple of these brackets that I can just glue on each side of the torso, and I also bought some of this strong Velcro tape, so we can also cut it to the right size and then glue it onto the brackets. And now we have an easy way of holding the torso on top of the legs, and it's also removable if you ever want to take the legs off, just like an actual minifig. So now we are basically 80% finished, but we still need a quite important part of the minifig. The head. So I whipped up some more designs and then started printing. Alright, guess we have to wait like 20 hours just for the bottom part of the head to finish printing. So here's some more random minifigs that we can add to the lineup to hopefully make the time go faster. So first we go a couple of these official LEGO plush toys. We have a banana man, who works great as a football if you're ever bored. Then there's also a hot dog man, who I'm going to use as my dog's new toy. And these two are around 23 and 27 centimeters tall. I also got this minifig candle, and it's 9.5 centimeters tall. Let's light it now and check back later to see how long it lasts. And then another unexpected minifig is the one that's made out of actual concrete. But we should see if it survives the hammer. Yeah, bro isn't so tall anymore. Alright, let's quickly check in on the print. Okay, so there's still some more time left. So I actually also got these knockoff Lego molds that we can use to make chocolate minifigs. Or some ice ones too. I also wanted to see if we could freeze parts of a minifig inside one of them. Damn, the chocolate ones taste pretty good. Okay, so the minifig lineup is looking pretty fire, not gonna lie. I mean, the candle minifig is literally on fire. Alright, so the middle and the bottom of the head have finished printing. And for the top, I wanted to take inspiration from these actual minifig heads that Lego makes. Where you can twist open the top and store stuff inside of them. So I printed my own version of the head top, and after taking some support material off, which is always satisfying, we can slap it on top and we end up with a massive minifig head. It does need a stud to go on top though, so I designed and printed one, and I decided to add my own bit of branding to it, since most LEGO studs include their actual name on them. Nice, let's just put this bad boy on top. And if we ever feel like it, we have a ton of room for our LEGO bricks. I also decided to build him a little brain, so let's just go ahead and put that inside. Hey, brain size doesn't matter, okay? He's still a smart boy. Oh yeah, also, this doesn't really look like a minifig anymore, and it only actually lasted about an hour. So we have a giant minifig now, but he still needs his identity. So I decided to load up some black filament into the 3D printer and print out his face, but only one layer thick, which basically means it's still flexible and it can curve around his head. Then just use some double-sided tape to stick everything on. And now he has that well-known minifig smile. My boy is looking cute. You can also move the eyes around to change the way he looks. Oh my god, bro. Alright, so now that the minifig is complete and all functional, here's some things that we can do with it. So first, after all this building, we can finally chill out on a sofa and watch movies. Or maybe play some games on the Switch with my new friend. He's not very good though. Or if we both get hungry, we can also make some food together. Nothing beats a cheeky bowl of cereal, huh? Alright, what about doing a little boxing competition? Yeah! <laughs> Look at this loser, he can't do anything. Okay, that one actually really hurt. Alright, alright. If there's one thing I'll win, it'll be a staring competition. Come on, I know you want to blink. Your eyes are getting so dry. Oh, my eyes are getting so dry. Oh, come on! Okay, so what about just forgetting our differences and actually getting lit together? Best friends. How about opening this mysterious YouTube package together? Sheesh, that's a shiny boy! 
But this milestone is the whole reason he even exists. So honestly, a huge thank you to all of you for watching my stuff. Also, let me know in the comments below what I should do for a million subscribers. Maybe an even bigger minifig. Nah, I'm just kidding. Unless. All right, but I still needed more ideas to do, so I asked a few of my fellow LEGO YouTubers. You should have an attempt to hold a LEGO set. I'm sure with its claw hand, that might be a little bit difficult, but I cannot wait to see. All right, so what about the scaled up minifig? Whoa! I reckon this plane might work. Um, all right, let's see if this works. Damn! One creepy thing you could do is have it watch someone while they sleep. All right, let's get in bed. Wait, what the heck is he doing? That's actually so creepy. Yo, guys, to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. Yo, what the? The next day. All right, so I want you to have the minifigure do all of Emmett's morning routine from the Lego movie. Step one, breathe. Step two, stick your head out of the window. What the heck? Step three, exercise. One, two, three. Step four, shower. Step five, shave. Step six, brush your teeth. Step seven, wear clothes. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too small. All right, so the time has come to take apart the big boy and place all of his limbs in the back of my car so that we can show him the real world. Yeah, this was definitely the strangest thing I carried in my car so far. But with the precious cargo fully secured, we started driving. And once we did arrive, the same way I put him in the car, I had to take him out piece by piece. It was a great bit of exercise, to be fair. My hands are actually frozen. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit cold outside, though. But then after placing the legs down, I decided to assemble the torso on top. Time for the head. So I ran back to the car and reached out to grab the head. And ignoring what just happened, we walked away with the final piece of the minifig. Now we have to crown the king. And just like that, we have fully assembled the big boy once again. Just literally in the middle of nowhere this time. I mean, I was going to take him to actual Legoland, but it's closed until February. But what other better way to see what the world is really like than this random part of the UK? And our boy is always smiling anyways. I really can't feel my hands though. It's way too cold for this. All right, let's, let's go back. But honestly, guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. You the best.